so um, let's go over. Um, let's go over how to solve this problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick little review. When we are doing problems like this, we uh, or I'm sorry, when we we're doing problems before that were similar to this, we had basic just inequalities. And basically, my reminder to Jordan was when you're looking into solving inequalities. Okay. When we were solving inequalities, um, they were just like solving equations. The operations and everything we did was exactly the same, except the only really difference was that whenever we multiply or divided by a negative number, then we had to flip the sign. And then also, our solution set was more than just one number. So to represent all of the solutions, we had to represent a graph. Okay? Just a little review. Now we're working on compound inequalities. And when you're looking at compound inequalities, um, I want you guys to think of this as two things. There's so when we're solving compound inequalities, basically what I want you guys to do is think about this as two separate inequalities. That's what compound inequalities are, two separate inequalities. So um, when we are writing this, I'm actually going to do this two different ways. Okay? But what I want you guys to understand is this is two separate inequalities. And the most important thing about compound inequalities is understanding what is the conjoining statement. Is it an and or is it an or? And when we practice graphing, you guys remember the and and the or kind of change what the graph looks like. So when we want to go ahead and solve this, the easiest thing and the best thing I like to do when students do not make mistakes is to write this as two separate inequalities. So to do that, just put your hand over one inequality and its other solution, and you have negative 7 is less than or equal to 3 plus 5x. And notice how I'm very, very stressing the and. Then cover up the other side. 3 plus 5x is less than 20, or less than or equal to 20. All right, so just notice how I wrote that out. I'm actually going to solve this other one another way because I'll do an example of one like that. So, but my preferred method is for you guys to do this. The reason why is because you're writing the and. Because students will do this problem and they'll forget that it's an and. But your compound inequality written like this is always going to be an and. So I prefer to write it out. However, some of you that um, are OK with solving might prefer this method. And the other method that we go through is, just like solving an equation, you can solve a compound inequality um, using your same operations. What we want to do is isolate the x in between. So to do that, we need to undo the operations that's happening to that x. My x is being added by 3 and being multiplied by 5. So the first thing you want to do is undo adding 3. Unlike an equation, though, that has one equal sign, this compound inequality has two inequality signs. So I got to make sure I subtract on both ends. Yep. This now becomes negative 10 is less than or equal to 5x, which is less than or equal to 17. Ooh, that was supposed to be a negative 20. Or not, really. But that's OK. Um, now I see my 5 is being multiplied by x, so I divide by 5. So therefore, I have negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to not 12, um, 17 fifths which is approximately 3.4. All right. So um, now we need to go and graph this. But the reason why this is sometimes not preferred, the reason where students make mistakes, is number one reason mistake is they forget it's an or, or it's an and. And number two is they make a mistake graphing it. And the reason they make a mistake graphing it is basically, guys, you just need to understand this is 3.4 and negative 2. The values of x are between negative 2 and 3.4. So when I go ahead and graph it, I'm going to say I'll put 0 in the front, and then I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So my two values are negative 2, so I put a nice circle there, and 3.4, which is between 3 and 4. Now, based on what we learned last class period, are these points open or closed? Are they a part of the solution or not a part of the solution? They are part of the solution, so we're going to shade them. And then, what are the values that are between negative 2 and 3.4? Those values are 2, 1, 0, negative 1. So you shade in between. All right. 